Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of Deception of Satan or God. Well, in part one, I think I proved without a doubt that sometimes the Lord does indeed deceive people, but that's only because they want to, well, they love their sin more than they love the Lord. When you seek the Lord with all your heart, you'll find him. But the uh, truth of the matter is, there is a lot of, how do I put this, when you have people that dishonor the Lord by their teachings and beliefs, God blinds their eyes. Let's take a look at the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to take a look at uh, chapter 29. And I guess we'll read this real quick. Deuteronomy 29, verse 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. And Moses called unto all Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt unto Pharaoh and to all his servants and unto all his land. The great temptations which thine eyes have seen, the signs and those great miracles, Yet the Lord hath not given you an heart to perceive, and eyes to see, and ears to hear unto this day. Yet the Lord hath not given you an heart to perceive, and eyes to see, and ears to hear unto this day. And I have led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxen old upon you, and thy shoe is not waxen old upon thy foot. Can you imagine that? Clothes, 40 years old, never wear out. How much would you pay, uh, pay for a pair of shoes like that, huh? Ye have not eaten bread, nor have ye drunk wine or strong drink, that ye might know that I am the Lord your God. So, when you have for example, the Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, the, the King James Bible clearly teaches that Jesus created everything. And the Bible teaches that God created everything. And if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals B equals C. If God created the heavens and the earth, and Jesus created the heavens and the earth, well then Jesus is God in the flesh. But they'll deny that and make him an angel. Matter of fact, they call him, they say he's Michael. Michael the archangel. And, you know, when you take the creator and turn him into a creation, God will blind your eyes. For example, the Mormons, in their Doctrines and Covenants book, they teach that Jesus is brother of Satan. Really, they do. Would you want Satan's brother for your Savior? I, I'm going to pass on that. And uh, yeah, those of you that listen to me for a while, I, you, you've heard this a number of times. But think about that. Can you imagine calling God that created all the angels and saying that he is one of them, especially one of the fallen ones? 
that is blasphemous to the core. You wonder why the Lord blinds the Mormons? I mean, Joseph Smith claimed that he was visited by an angel named M-O-R-O-N, Moron, I, with an I on the end. I mean, really. Now, in Hebrew, you read, in English, you read from the left to the right, but in Hebrew, you read from the right to the left. So, if you looked at M-O-R-O-N-I, that would be I, moron. Yeah. I, moron, for believing an angel called I, moron. And you're going to believe that over the Bible? Really? Uh, you know, and then you've got people like uh, John Hagee that, uh, you know, claims that the, uh, the you-know-whos have a back door to salvation, that they don't need Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John Hagee says, mm, well, that's only true for you Gentiles. The you-know-whos, well, they got a back door. They don't need Jesus. Uh, you know what? I bet you he actually believes that. I really do. And then, um, for example, Muhammad. Supposedly he was visited by an angel and was given what became the Quran. Uh, basically, that's telling when Jesus was on the cross and said, it is finished, Basically, that's saying, mm, almost. That's like Jesus saying, it is almost finished. But I'm going to send another, well, not Jesus. Uh, to the Muslims, Jesus is just a prophet. But uh, at least they honor Jesus as a prophet, which is more than the you-know-whos do. Well, they teach the you-know-whos. Uh, they teach that Jesus is a prophet too, but a false one. So, you want to know why the you-know-whos usually can't hear the gospel? Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look at Mark chapter 3 and verse 7. We're going to skip around. I don't want to read the whole chapter. Uh, verse 7. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumea. Now, Idumea was the uh, area where the Edomites, the children of Esau, were. Um, keep that in mind. Uh, I wonder if they were following Jesus around to try to trip him up catch him in his words to have him put to death that's kind of how i would think that would that's going down but i don't know all right and from jerusalem and from i am i am i do mia and from beyond jordan and they about tyre and sidon a great multitude when they had heard what great things he did came unto him and he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him, as many as had plagues. And unclean spirits, demons, devils, right? In the Greek, it's demons. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. So, let's skip a little bit. Let's go to skip to 22. And the scribes, when they came down from Jerusalem, he said, uh, so in Mark 3, 22, and the scribes, who were the scribes? They were the people, the Jews that copied the Bible. So, 
And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. And in verse 23, and he, Jesus, called them unto him and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself, he is divided. He cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his goods. Verily I say unto you, All sins, all sins, shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. These you-know-whos were claiming that Jesus was doing his miracles and casting out devils by the power of Satan. Beelzebub. You want to know why they can't, some, most of them can never hear the gospel? This is why. Because they believe, and they're taught this, and they believe it. The door is slammed shut. And in part one that I did, when we read where the, uh, the seer went to King Jehoshaphat and asked him, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and help those that hate the Lord? I'm paraphrasing. Well, doesn't the uh, Baptist churches and virtually all the churches, don't they bless those that hate Jesus, that teach this kind of stuff? Don't they bless the people that teach that Jesus performed his miracles by the power of Satan? They do. Does God blind their eyes? I, I'm of the opinion they do. I really do. But, um, you know, it's only by the power of the Lord that your eyes are opened. In Romans 2 and verse 4, or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering? Boy, it's a good thing that the Lord has got goodness, forbearance, and long suffering. In other words, he puts up with a lot. Oh, yeah. Not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. You know, it's the Holy Spirit that leads us to repentance. Believe it or not. And, you know, there, once the Holy Spirit has led you to repentance and you harden your heart, you know, just remember, when Noah built the ark and the flood started to come, it was God himself that closed the door. That was it. You were either in the ark or you were outside to drown. There was no third option. You're either in Christ or you're not in Christ. Have you ever talked to people? It's like pre-tribbers. You know, I show them plain verses that prove the pre-trib rapture is wrong, and they can't see it. And that's probably why. 
because they've blessed those that deny Jesus. By Bible definition, they're an the, um, the people that they're blessing over in the Middle East are antichrists. They deny that Jesus is the Christ. They're antichrist. And you'll wonder why they can't hear. Well, there's a reason. In uh, Perhaps you've heard this before. I did it not too long ago in a study, but I mentioned that. Have you ever heard Bible teachers, supposed Bible teachers, teach that, you know, well, you know, Jesus taught in parables because, you know, they were simple people and, and he used earthly examples to explain heavenly things. And that's why he talked to them in parables, so that they could more easily understand. Is that why Jesus used parables? I mean, I've heard that taught many a times. But in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 10, we read, And the disciples came and said unto him, Unto who? Jesus. Why speakest thou unto them in parables? You know, why, why do you speak to them in parables? Well, why don't you just come out? Just, just come out and say it, you know. Don't, don't say things cryptically, you know. Just plain and simple. That's the Bob translation. Verse 11. He, Jesus, he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. But to them it is not given. Why did he tell them in parables? So that they wouldn't understand. Do you remember where Jesus said not to cast your pearls before swine? We'll get to that. Verse 12, For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance, but Whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, saying, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes. Whose eyes? The disciples. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. In Matthew 7 and verse 6, Jesus said, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. You know what the rend means? It means to rip apart. You ever seen tusk, the teeth on a, a wild boar? Uh, any of you remember the Disney movie Old Yeller? Yeah. They're dangerous animals. Swine are dangerous animals very dangerous they'll tramp trample your pearls under the feet and then they'll turn again and rip you to shreds with their teeth now what are dogs uh you know give not that which is holy unto the dogs what did jesus mean there is he talking about four-legged animals that wag their tails when they're happy to see you I loved my little dog. She was a thief because 
she would steal everybody's heart. Yeah, everybody loved that little thing. Matter of fact, my brother stole her from me. Not really. I was working two jobs and uh, working two jobs and yeah, I just didn't have time for her. So I used to always have my brother uh, babysit her. And then one day he decided he didn't want to give her up. And I don't blame him. She was a she was a bundle of love. That's what she was. But what is it? We're not talking about one of them kind of dogs, are we? No. So what is a dog? Well, guess what? Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17 and 18. Here you go. Deuteronomy 23, 17 and 18. There shall be no whore. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. You don't want to take a prostitute's money into the house of the Lord or the money of a sodomite. You know, that's parallelism, people. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the dog, uh, sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore, a prostitute, or the price of a dog, a sodomite, into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. You don't, you know, you're, what are you doing? You're casting, uh, you know, pearls before swine, and you don't give that which is holy into the dogs. I, the way I read this, we shouldn't even be evangelizing sodomites. If this is, if that's the strict literal interpretation, you know, I've met one guy that, was into ministry that said that he had been into that kind of stuff. And um, I, I, you know, I had no reason to doubt him because he wasn't proud of it. He was, he was ashamed of it. But, uh, you know, I guess the Lord can save virtually anybody, but uh, that's one thing, boy, that's, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. All right. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. And I pray to God that I never handle the Word of God deceitfully. You know, like I told you people, I'm an amateur. I'm not a professional. I'm not getting paid. People that get paid to do a job are professionals. So, you know, truck drivers, professional drivers, they get paid. Somebody's paying them to do a job. That makes you a professional. Well, nobody pays me to do Bible stuff. I mean, yeah, I appreciate those of you that have sent me donations, I appreciate it. There's been a few of you. Um, not many, and that's fine. The Lord always provides for me. I mean, uh, I could tell you stories, but, you know, it's not about me. It's about Christ. And uh, I've had people ask me to do a, a testimony, you know, my story. Eh, you know, it's... But it's not about me. It's about Christ. And that's why I've never done a testimony. I've done little bits and pieces here and there, but but you know what? I it's just I look back and even when I was had blasphemed the Lord, he still looked out after me. I mean, that's just you know, I, I just can't 
mishandle the Lord deceitfully. I just, uh, the scriptures, I just can't do it. You might not agree with me on everything, and hey, if I'm wrong, well, the Lord will show me one day, either in this flesh or in the kingdom, if I'm found worthy. Are any of us worthy? Verse 2, we, But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall be present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the th things which are seen are temporal, temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now let's read 1 John chapter 2. And, you know, people, I pick on the Mormons, I pick on the Jehovah's Witnesses, um, you know, and I pick on the Baptists. You know why? Because I went to one of their Bible colleges, and they had an entire class on understanding dispensationalism. And I just recently did, um, let's see, this will be, if you go back to Bible studies from this one, um, promises to Israel fulfilled in the church where I cover dispensational theology which is basically denying the grace of Christ I mean they have another gospel I mean yeah they do teach the gospel and grace of Jesus Christ but only for a certain period of time and then after that they have another gospel uh, it's you know, that's why I pick on them, because I know them all too well. I know what they teach. I went to one of their Bible colleges. I have an earned master's degree in ministry. 
and a bachelor's in theology, and then I got a dual bachelor's in uh, Christian education. I only had to take like another couple classes to get its two bachelor's degrees, because honestly, I wanted to teach more than anything in this world. I wanted to be a Bible teacher at a like a Christian high school. I wanted that so bad. But you know what? You can't reform Babylon. God said, come out of her, my people. So, YouTube. For as long as the Lord allows, I'm on YouTube and BitChute. And uh, when the Lord takes me off, well, that's it. So, that's my life story. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Uh, back in the old English days, a lawyer, an attorney, was called an advocate because they were advocating your side. Have you ever heard, uh, you know, like in debate class, they would pick a subject? And, uh, you know, it's sort of like the Democrats and the Republicans, you know, okay, which side of the issue do you want to be on, you know? And I'm sure you've heard the expression, devil's advocate. Yeah. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Now think about that. How would you like to have the judge's son for your attorney. I'm sure you all have heard that before. So We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ righteous, and he is the propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. And what did Jesus say were the, his commandments? Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. He said, on, on these hang all the law and the prophets. You know, if you want to keep the feast days, you want to keep the Sabbath, hey, that's good. But keeping them is not going to get you into heaven. And not keeping them, in my opinion, is going to keep you out of heaven. So, and besides, you'd have a hard time going to Jerusalem three times a day with the Antichrist in charge there. I would probably, if I went over there, I would probably end up dead. Oh yeah, Chaplain Bob, yeah, he went to, uh, he went to uh, Jerusalem and he, uh, he had a heart attack. Yeah, and, uh, and then they cremated his body uh, right after they did the autopsy. Yeah. And here be, hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Can you go to Catholic Church and say five Hail Marys and throw money in the collection plate? after you uh, did a hip for the mafia, you know, you killed somebody on Saturday, and then on Sunday you go to Mass. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also, also so to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye had heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, 
is in darkness even unto now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. He that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. I don't know if you know it, but uh, have you ever heard of a pathology of disease or a pathologist a doctor that studies diseases well this is the pathology of sin the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life that's the pathology of sin the lust of the flesh fornication adultery the lust of the eyes uh, greed, you know, you see somebody's got a Mercedes Benz and a mansion on the beach and uh, piles and piles, a mountain of gold, you know, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. If it's one thing I'm not guilty of, it's pride. The Lord has knocked me down so many times, I know better. Verse 17, And the world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You know, maybe we need to find out what the will of God is and do it. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. Oh yeah. They uh, fill the pulpits of the churches and mosque and the sin of gogs. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that this is the last time. And there's people who will tell you, well, you know, and they, they were always talking about the last time. And, and, you know, the time is short and, you know, all these kind of things, you know. Well, it's been 2,000 years and we're still waiting for Christ to come back. You ever heard that kind of garbage? Well, guess what? Let's take a look at something. In 2 Peter 3, 8, we read, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day... Is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day so you know what when they say well it's been 2,000 years and Christ still hasn't returned you know it's like the Lord saying I'll, oh, I'll be back in a day or two you know if uh, somebody borrowed some money from you and say hey I'll, I'll pay you back in a couple of days you know you know, on the second day, are you going to be crying that, oh, he's a thief and he's not paying me back? Hey, he told you in a couple of days, right? A day or two. I mean, come on. <sighs> I've heard it. Even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that this is the last time. They went out from us, 
but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. You know, there's only one religious group, and they're in the Middle East, that deny that Jesus is the Christ. Does God blind their eyes? Well, you got to realize there are tares among the wheat. Or should I say there's wheat among the tares? Because it seems like the tares horribly outnumber the wheat. Verse 24. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Huh. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him ab abideth in you, and ye, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Boy, that's a mouthful, huh? All right, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I guess we'll close this out. Verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. You know what, people? I've had uh, so many people trying to tell me that Paul is a false apostle. And I read this kind of stuff. You know, all you got to do is read the second book of Peter, where Peter calls Paul a, a brother in the faith, or a brother in Christ. I forget exactly what, but he calls him a brother. So, but to do that, you got to deny the book of Acts that records the conversion of Paul. You got to deny Second Peter. You got to deny all of Paul's writings. And you got to claim that the Holy Spirit failed to warn the apostles that Paul was a fake, a satanic fake. Did the, did the Holy Spirit fail to warn the 11 apostles that Paul was a fake? Really? And, you know, that's what they want you to believe. And the way I look at it, once you deny Paul, you deny the one who called, trained, and sent Paul. 1 Corinthians 2.2 2, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Alright, verse 3. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and 
in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Think about it, people. If the Satan had known that by having Christ killed, he was going to create the forgiveness of sin by the shedding of blood so that everybody that believed in him could earn, uh, not earn, but that's a poor choice of words, would uh, have a way for salvation. You think you think the devil would have <laughs> had the Lord crucified? No, there's no way he would have ever done that. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Wow. The things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what is man, I'm sorry, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. One last thing. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. For this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. There you go, people. All right. Um, this is the end of part two of uh, deception of, of Satan or of God. Sometimes both, I guess. You know, but uh, like I said, uh, like I read before in part one, at the very beginning, when you seek the Lord with all your heart, you'll find him. And the book of James says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You know, if you're going to have one foot in the world and one foot in the Lord, um, don't be surprised if uh, you fall down because you don't have a, a steady footing. 
So that's the way that goes. All right, well, this is the end of part two. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.